So we are ready. Uh, hello and welcome everyone to the sixth seminar in the IS 102 series in the Chris Freeman Centenary Lecture Series. Today is a very special day to us. It was on 7th January 2021 that Ben Tokay Lundwald inaugurated uh, this uh, forum, chrisis.org, by, by flagging off uh, the first episode of Innovation System 101 lecture series. Hence, today is our first anniversary day. Looking back, it gives us uh, a great sense of satisfaction to see that we have produced five series, 26 events, ran 52 hours of live online programs, engaged over 100 speakers, and at least 1,500 participants. We might organize a separate anniversary event during January. Uh, now I request Bentoke to speak a few words about our activities during the last year. Please, Bentoke. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, it's great pleasure and honor to uh, say a few words at this occasion. Uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, I gave a small envelope to uh, Christopher Freeman at his 80th uh, uh, anniversary uh, birthday. And the envelope was my birthday gift to him. And inside it said, uh, I'm working now hard to establish, together with colleagues from all parts of the world, a global network, uh, which will be called GlobalX. And I do that in, in, in your honor. Uh, when I did that, uh, my hope was that this network would mobilize young people uh, from all parts of the world and especially the developing world uh, in doing research and innovation and doing so in the spirit of Freeman uh, to create a somewhat, somewhat better world. Huh? Uh, that was what Chris was uh, working on all his life. Huh? And uh, I see uh, Global X, and especially, specifically the the kind of activity uh, that uh, we have had the last year, as a kind of materialization of uh, this uh, hope uh, for the future. Uh, the the so-called Chris Group. Uh, it's not, it's not the Chris Freeman group. It's actually, I think, originally Center for Research on Innovation System. Uh, but we got this double meaning of Chris during, uh, during this series of, of seminar. And this group, I think, is about 30 people. And uh, almost all of them come from the developing world, either in Latin America, in Africa and in Asia. And uh, what you are doing uh, has been extremely important in this period where COVID has closed down a lot of activities. You have shut down of universities and you have great barriers for travel. You can't go anywhere. And I think this series of seminars where you have mobilized uh, more than 1,000 people uh, around the world, uh, especially young people, has been uh, extremely important in keeping uh, the network alive, uh, keeping uh, debates open for both uh, young and senior scholars. That is very important in itself, but I would, I would say it has a special significance in this era. Uh, we have seen how COVID has demonstrated uh, that it's absolutely necessary to move towards a different world order where, where we share knowledge, uh, where we uh, uh, different uh, 
individuals and organizations from all parts of the world innovate together and use knowledge uh, uh, to counter uh, 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 global challenges. At the same time, we have seen, uh, regrettably, we have seen movements in the opposite direction, more nationalist, uh, more international conflict. And in this situation, one of the great hopes that I have, and I'm sure Chris Freeman had, is that the young generation uh, from all parts of the world will uh, join forces uh, to work for a more sustainable uh, world. And, and I see uh, uh, what you have been doing together in this core committee uh, has been extremely uh, 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 important element in what I regard or, or look for as uh, globalization from below, not from above by intellectual monopolies and big states, but by people working together in spite of everything coming from uh, different uh, 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 continents. And therefore, I would like to uh, congratulate the whole core committee Verona, Swati, Patricia, Rayesh, and Sean, and, and many, many others from all parts of the world for the work you have done. And I want to wish you uh, a, a, a great success also for the future. That's what I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Bentoke, for that, uh, those kind words. Uh, so we will have, uh, we, we are planning to have a separate program to celebrate the, the, the first year, uh, still planning. I think we will be able to do it in another couple of months. Uh, today we have two speakers and four discussants. Each speaker would get 20 minutes and discussants get 10 minutes time. Uh, we will take a little more than two hours uh, today. Uh, first presentation is by Patricia Lopez of UFRGS Brazil. Patricia will be discussed by Swati Mata, Bentoke, and Carlo Pietrobelli in that order. I request all the speakers and commentators to stick to the time limit. I will try to signal you two minutes before the time limit. That, that doesn't matter, but try, please try to keep uh, the, the stick to the time limit. Audience, please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box. I shall collect all the questions and pass on to the speakers. So now I invite Patricia to take over and start her presentation. Okay. Uh, hello again. Uh, thank you uh, for introducing me. Uh, uh, first is I uh, would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's a great honor to be able to present my paper in this seminar. Uh, I would like to say about my interest in, uh, in studying catching up the, the, in the fine wine industry lies mainly in the possibility of analyzing the technologies, uh, the technological change in the industry and also the firm's ability to include these new technologies uh, by adapting and learning from them. This paper uh, was based in my master thesis in economics and my supervisor uh, was the Dr. Janaina Rufoni, who, who is assisting us. I, I starting my presentation about the, the paper. I'm sharing the, the screen. Uh, can you see the presentation? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. The title is uh, Analysis of the Evolution of the Fine Wine Sector in Vale dos Vinhedos, Brazil. Is there ongoing catching up process in the sector? First, uh, how I uh, organization the, the bibliography research. It was a bibliography, bibliographic study, survey 
and on catching up concepts, uh, both at the national level and the sectoral level. Window of opportunity concept is important for understanding possible technology gaps, firms behavior, uh, towers innovation, and how they manage to capture and absorb new tech technologies. Technologies. Wine sector in global, national, and local. Analysis of catching up in the wine sector and main information about the Valle dos Vinhedos and its history. Some concepts about catching up. Catching up is ability of a country to reduce income and uh, productiv productivity gaps related to leading countries. Lagar countries expect to grow faster than their leaders to be able to make the pairing. This concept is uh, Giuliani, Morrison, and Habelati, 2011. The economic development of countries behind the technological and economic frontiers involves learning to master ways of doing what they use in leading countries and us, catching up. But this doesn't mean simply copying. This concept is uh, Mazzelloni and Nelson 2007. Uh, in a sector approach, Maler Benene 2009 deal with the importance of analyzing sector innovation system and argue that discussion in this area are growing in the studies on industrial and innovation economics. The authors point out that one of the uh, reasons for the growth in that industry systems approach considering a wide range of factors that affect innovation and production in a specific industry. One of these factors is the position of firms in terms of their learning capabilities that are the drivers of innovation and production. About the Valle dos Vinhedos, why uh, uh, this study is relevant. Uh, Valle dos Vinhedos is located in Serra Gaúcha, Rio Grande do Sul, south of Brazil, and has been standing out in the production of the fine wines. The importance of analyzing the fine wine sector, uh, sector in Valle dos Vinhedos lies in the fact of in the fact that this sector gives more added value to agribusiness of Rio Grande do Sul, which is still highly based on production of commodities. The relevance of this study is to analyze uh, whether the change in the wine production profiling Vale dos Vinhedos mean a change in the technological level and how the sector is currently behaving to verify if a catching up process is underway. About the methodological procedures I use in this uh, research. Uh, an exploratory research was chosen in order to gather detailed data from the sector. Exploratory qualitative research with an, uh, an exploratory study on six to delve deeper into the subject to make it clear and construct questions to conduct the research. Research universe, uh, wineries and institutions involved directly uh, with the wine sector and the type of sampling is non-probabilistic. Few uh, uh, interviews in person, in local by the researcher responsible for this, uh, this uh, the dissertation. The interviews took place in the period from April to June of uh, 2019. This period was chosen because the first quarter of the year uh, in here is de dedicated by the industry to the grape harvest. And we needed to wait for this period to pass for uh, give me attention in my research. 
The target group of the interviews were the uh, wineries and institutions in Vale dos Vinhedos. About the group of wineries, uh, nine wineries uh, was, uh, was chosen from Vale dos Vinhedos with the highest representativeness in technological chains of the 22 uh, wineries registered in the Association of Producers of Vale dos Vinhedos, producing fine wines were listed. Beside those, two other uh, wineries from outside Vale dos Vinhedos were chosen. Vinícola Luiz Argenta, considered the most modern winery in Brazil. Vinícola Casa Perini, company that most develops brand recognition work. About the institutions, group of institutions, five institutions serving and, uh, and its uh, characteristics. Institutions that work for the development of the sector, access to uh, external technologies, participate, uh, participation of the wineries in international events, uh, research in the viticulture area, train technical professionals, actions for the development of the region and the tourism, technical discussion forums for uh, product quality improvement. The data collection was a career out through a few interviews with, the, with a semi-structured questionnaires with open question that allowed the discussion and deepening of the teams according to the theoretical study of this research. That analysis was performed using the NVivo system. This software supports qualitative and varied research methods. Using it, it's, a, it's possible to organize, structure, analyze and find information in unstructured or qualitative data, such as interviews, open survey uh, response, articles, social media, and web content. Uh, my challenges in this part of the research. It was challenging to explain the concept of the research catching up to the interviewers. They, has, um, they had a uh, difficult to, to understand the concept. It's a new concept for, him, uh, for them. Uh, so sometimes are uh, difficult to explain about the, the, the concept of catching up. Chosen wineries that gave gone through the catching up in process. Lack of time to collect data in contrast to the level of information needed for the master thesis, uh, sometimes uh, 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 because the the, the time uh, uh, I need to uh, uh, stay past the the the, um, the grape harvest, so the time was short for the all the the, the research about the results. Overview of the analysis. The fine, uh, the fine wine industry in Vale dos Vinhedos went through a catching up process in the years 2005 to 2010, when the technological pairing occurred. Currently, it doesn't go through catching up now. Two elements uh, that prove this statement are. First, Technology. This sector is technological, uh, technologically paired and has been keeping up to date uh, since the leap occurred in the years uh, 2005 to 2010, compared to, uh, the, to road technologies. There is no technological gap in the sector uh, necessary for uh, occurring the catching up. 
uh, of the, the sector in fine wine from Vale dos Vinhedos in relation uh, to the road. And this gap is important for uh, the, the catching up accurate. Market, consumer prejudice towers national products and the high tax burden on these products are the main barriers to a new leap occurring. The research uh, points to a possible new catching up when the industry is faced uh, with the qualification of national demand. Since this is the main market focus of the wineries study, the issue is the challenge of uh, expanding per capita consumption of the fine wines. Uh, in, uh, in this case, the challenge also lies in the fact that, uh, that wine uh, consumption uh, in Brazil is less than one bottle per capita. Compared to the United States, for example, it is not one of the largest uh, wine consumption consumers. Consumption, uh, consumption rates uh, is four bottles per capita. So if Brazil uh, matched the consumption of the USA, the demand would already drive the industry to a new technolo uh, technological movement in production to meet this uh, new, level, new level of demand. About the, the challenges uh, when you compare uh, the, the theoretical research and practical application. The challenge was the, to discover uh, during the research that the fine wine industry in the Valle dos Vinhedos wasn't undergoing a catching up process because the research is about catching up. So uh, this was my, my principally uh, uh, challenging. Challenges about the theoretical research and uh, practical application uh, again. In this case, uh, we tried to observe what was currently happening in the industry and some discoveries uh, were made. The industry is currently technological uh, technologically uh, paired. The challenge is to overcome market barriers to increase consumption. This market barriers being uh, overcome and consumption increasing, it's uh, possible that a new technological leap pushed by demand uh, will be provoked. About the, the study uh, contributions. The relevance of analyzing the competitive conditions of a product productivity uh, sector that has as its technological trajectory, the offer of increasingly premium products. The importance of analyzing the trajectory uh, of the sector, meso level, which allows the uh, understanding of the rules of different uh, actors in the process of sector development, firms of distinct size and behaviors, public and private in, in, in private institutions. When analyzed the importance of sectorial innovation system and the research carried out on the learning capacity aspects of the firms in the Vale dos Vinhedos fine wine sector, these organizations are not currently undergoing a catching up process due to existing technological pairing. The first leap to the learning capacity of a new technolo technologies and the ability to implement them were a fundament, fundamental for this occurrence. Uh, about the conclusions, uh, catching up in the Valle dos Vinhedos wine sector took place between 2005 and 2010. Vale dos Vinhedos is not currently ongoing a catching up process. 
current, uh, current technology pairing and no gaps in Vale dos Vinhedos. Market barriers, consumer prejudice, high tax burden on prices, hinder market growth to leap occurrence. For a new leap to occur, market barriers must be overcome, which will change the level of demand and drive to a new process of technological change in the sector. Advice to a uh, Experian uh, researcher from this Global South. Be flexible uh, when relating theory and practice during research. We need to uh, think about the, 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 the two uh, theory and the, the practice to adapt uh, in, uh, in research. Adapt concepts to what is found in the field if necessary, so that new possibilities for research can be generated. When we have difficult, we need to uh, be um, uh, looking for another uh, forms to, to continue the research. The use of a qualitative research enriches the research because it makes it possible to encounter new challenges during the study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia, for that interesting presentation and also for keeping the time limit. Thank you very much. Yours is a master's thesis. Now, let's listen to what our discussants have to say. Uh, Swati, please. You have 10 minutes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rajesh, and uh, for this opportunity. And uh, greetings to everyone. And uh, I must uh, congratulate uh, Petrika for uh, for a very interesting paper on a very interesting topic and the very complex issues which she has taken. And that too, it is her master thesis. And uh, basically at that level, looking at this complexity is actually uh, a great complex job. And uh, uh, actually, to uh, complement this, uh, I, I must uh, say that you followed the structure which we have actually asked you for the presentation, including the advice which uh, you can give to the young researchers, and that is that is much appreciable. And I really uh, like um, your presentation in a in a very systematic manner. Having said this, um, uh, I have also gone through the paper which you have uh, um, actually submitted, and uh, I was thinking of uh, as a researcher going to publish that paper and in that context i would be uh, you know like to uh, uh, give some suggestions or point which you could just take away so that you could just improve upon the paper which which was actually submitted so there are certain points um, uh, with which uh, you know i would just like to uh, to start first uh, with the uh, concept of catching up itself. I, I, I liked um, how, uh, you know, at that stage, you just try to understand that thing and um, have um, uh, have come across very good papers which actually explain this these concepts nicely. And at the same time, you just try to understand that, you know, catching up itself, you know, just talk about that there is point A and at the same time, you have been working to reach point A at the same time when point A is itself moving so that complexity itself is 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 very tough to comprehend and um a good literature review has done on this account, but coming again to the to the paper and the structure of the paper, the abstract was missing. So I, I was just uh, focusing upon the publication part of view. So just just briefly, just uh, try to write down what actually the major points uh, which which uh, which can be noted for for that thing. Um, you know, this is about the structure. 
but at the same time the introduction the introduction needs to be very focused you know what actually you want to focus upon you know basically uh, you know the, the the case study which why you have been taking that case study what is uh, you know the theory behind it what are the complexities and things like that so that you could just come across that this is this is my aim and i just want to do this with with the research which i'm going uh, you know forward to so that to increase the interest of the re readers in that so that parts uh, you know needs to be uh, done in an interesting manner and at the same time uh, you know uh, as soon as we start reading your paper you just start with the concept of sketching up and things so i think it should be in the review of literature or theoretical foundations like this and there are certain concepts about which you have talked you talked about the catching up process yes and um, uh, the, the 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 concept of global value chains it is coming up uh, in the sense that uh, the the production process has been fragmented all over the world there are hubs um, around across the world uh, which are into it and there are spikes and, and there are lots and lots of literature regarding this so it, since you have focused on these points you need to just uh, give uh, the 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 conceptual uh, clarity about about uh, these concepts too uh, even um, the uh, about that i'll i'll just uh, talk about when i would be coming to the case study which you have taken then again uh, there was um, i read that uh, you talked about the sectoral innovation system uh, I agree that this this portion comes in again, but again it requires a discussion. When we talk about the system, and lots and lots of things, you know, you have endlessly evolutionary concepts enters, and then you have to explain that how come all these things unanimously goes into say uh, making the global value chain works or global value chain when it works that it leads to the building up of the innovation capabilities and things like this. So that that sort of uh, uh, you know, interviewing of all these concepts needs, needs to be there in in the paper. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the center of of uh, the, the the thing which you have been taking up. And then again, coming to the framework, it should be the center that was missing. So that that needs us, and it would come from all these concept uh, which you which you did mention. But it should be in a systematic manner so that it interestingly come up and your framework actually emerges from there. So this is, uh, you know, about about the structure. Now coming to the to the case study which you have taken. So again, as I have already told, this is a very important concept, uh, 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 and uh, the the importance of this industry comes up from the fact because we have been looking at the catching up concept from the high technology industry, semiconductors and electronics and things. And since you have been looking at from the agri business, and this is this is quite important. There are uh, many um, uh, case. Studies Studies. And you did mention about um, a very important book by Giovanni Morrison and Rebelletti. They did have, uh, uh, you know, case studies of, of various sectors, including uh, high tech and low tech, which we may call. But actually, the thing is this, they have been looking at in the evolutionary thing that how over time, the, the industries have evolved uh, uh, and, and taken care of all these, all these aspects. So this is uh, this is uh, you know one thing, and at the same time, uh, regarding again uh, the you know how to how to make presentation of this thing, you need to first give the glimpse of which industry you are actually focusing upon. Having said this, just just try to uh, you know explain it from the perspective of the global wine industry, and then try to see that where uh, you know Brazilian uh, industry for in are what is their stage There are industries, um, uh, there are countries which are into this wine production but at the same time how come you know what, what are the challenges in that perspective what actually these all these industries has been doing and then we could just land uh, the the concept of catching up so the the thing is this catching up with whom you know it, it's it's a concept yes but there would be someone who is ahead so we need to just catch up or we just want to converge amongst that particular group that needs a little bit of clarity so that you know we just move in a focused direction that what actually the aim of the paper is and how we are approaching that 
so um, uh, at the same time um, uh, about this evolution of uh, again uh, the, this uh, industry there are uh, it's it's not about a particular timing you did mention that in two, from 2005 to 2010 there was some catching up but again you need to explain which what do you mean by catching up in that that period and then when you enter it wasn't catching up so what happened then so did, did they fall back or what what, what that that needs to, uh, needs to be cleared. But at the same time, when we talk about the beginning of the industry, how it actually come up, uh, this this uh, part of uh, Brazil is, is you did mention that it is in uh, south of uh, south of Brazil, yes, and uh, this means that we need to understand uh, the viticulture of that thing, uh, particularly just geographical proximity, which leads to the growth of say uh, the grapes uh, there or the fruits which could be used. You know the the the, the weather that why this particular uh, you know, industry did come up there. And at the same time, the influence of, say, Italy, uh, uh, Italian, I, I have just, uh, you know, so and just tried to find out the geography of that place because I'm from India. I just tried to, uh, you know, figure out that thing. And uh, it, it just emerges that even that uh, you know proximity did have an influence. So uh, even in that case, we could just see that uh, you know the the, uh, the learning processes. It, it, it just take uh, so much of points, the learning process, you could just, uh, you know, know how, know what, and, uh, you know, things like that. So again, these are, these are certain concepts which we needs to be looked at. So uh, this, this point, and at the same time, um, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, if, if uh, in the paper itself, when you are talking about the growth of the sector, then you need to focus. You know, you can give the uh, this all these things in terms of value. Say the the growth in terms of value, in terms of production, in terms of export, and things like this. But at the same time, you know, you need to just if if you are just focusing upon a particular uh, area, as as uh, you did mention, and in that case, we have to look into to the backward link linkages and the forward linkages that these are the concerns which which are there in the global value chain things so there you could just just try to learn and uh, there are studies which just talks about that if you enter into global value chains through backward linkages later on through building capabilities you could enter into forward linkages and your you know the possibility of exports uh, possibility of entering new markets it, it just uh, just started but again the core of this thing is learning and that is at the center that it is very tough to actually catch up to move forward to upgrade yourself as as a firm over years and in that thing you know learning is required and in those the concept for innovation system approach enters and all these things intermingled with each other and that reflects the evolution of the uh, of the industry. So um, yeah, one more thing, uh, you know, you did mention about, uh, you know, when you were talking about the catching up, uh, you know, two, three points, which I just want to mention is, you know, catching up itself, catching up one, I have told you, you need, to, you know, somebody's ahead, you just want to catch up. But at the same time, there are concepts like you are leapfrogging, you are just keeping some steps and you are leapfrogging, you are taking detours and you are coming in front. So what actually uh, you know we, we need to focus upon so these are very important things uh, yes i would be concluding yes uh, rajesh i would be concluding and uh, and the important uh, point uh, one more uh, then then uh, i'll stop about the uh, you did mention about the demand pool and uh, from your presentation also you try to focus only on uh, brazil you know indigenous uh, consumption of uh, wine production so why not going out why not looking at other markets uh, and and again uh, uh, you did mention about that uh, you know comparing brazil with us uh, consumption 
education per capita and things like that. But if we just talk about, say, for example, Indian culture, there are suppose there are cultural differences of say taking. For example, uh, you know there is the possibility of uh, you know cultural differences which uh, which could lead to the per capita differences in the consumption of of wine probably. On the other hand, income plays a very important role in this as as uh, you know countries grow and in the in the context uh, you know uh, and market itself you know, you know uh, this uh, brazil could uh, focus upon countries like China or South Asian countries which are growing fast. India has a big market, probably this sort of thing. So this means what I just want to tell you is if we just try to focus that thing is in, in per capita, domestically we are not consuming. In a globalized world, we could just have that possibilities. If we have a catch up thing, we just reach a hegemony, the the, the market could be there. So, so uh, you know, these are some of the points uh, which, uh, uh, which are, which are uh, you know important and uh, one more thing and and then uh, there are uh, you know there are two things but uh, focusing upon one you did mention about the institutions you did mention about the characteristics of the institution but it requires detail institutions in what manner you actually you know focused upon you need to write it down i probably I know that uh, you did visit it, that you have the, but you have not written it in the manner that which which institutions you have been talking about. Are you talking about the R and D sector or things like that? That that needs to be written clearly. And um, uh, yeah, so again, on a on a very uh, another point uh, that you did mention about the difference between the family oriented and later on it just uh, move into um, a, a, a big industry. Again, this this process, this transformation. Why why did how, uh, why did it happen? How did it happen? Earlier, world uh, where they were just um, uh, producing this for self consumption, or later on it just get valued how they could just transform so these are very interesting points very interesting you know research thing and it just increases lots of inquisitivity that what has actually happened so i i really enjoyed and uh, i think it's, it's time i should just just stop and again thanking you for uh, for an interesting work and uh, wish you best that uh, you know you just produce a good paper out of it and thank you very much thanks for your time and thank you Thank you, Swati, for the spirited comments. And now, thank you very much. Uh, Professor Bentaga, please. Is it me? Yes, 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 Professor. You, you first. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks for an uh, interesting uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have some of the same issues uh, to raise um, as, as uh, Swati uh, mentioned. Um, I, I, I think you give a picture where uh, the, the main result is that you had a catching up process. Uh, taking place in the first decade um, in in uh, this uh, region, and um, it seems to have uh, been a successful transformation in all um, the companies uh, that you mentioned. Uh, you make some distinction between uh, smaller family-owned and uh, uh, some bigger units. Uh, but you don't really tell us about um, the, the corporate governance of the big units. Are they private uh, businesses and are they owned locally or international businesses? Could be useful uh, to know. Um, also, I think that, uh, I think that uh, it would have been nice to get uh, some quantitative uh, indications of the importance of the industry in general in, uh, in Brazil and specifically in this uh, district, uh, including some data on the relative uh, importance of uh, 
fine wine as uh, compared to more standard uh, products. Um, then uh, Swati mentioned a lot about global value chains. And I think one way to do this could have been to look at um, uh, the wine industry as a kind of input output system, a production system, uh, where you look at uh, different stages from uh, primary product, which are the grape, to uh, uh, and, 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 and refer to uh, what are the main interfaces uh, in the production system uh, between uh, different stages of production. What are the main technologies uh, at each uh, interface and who are uh, the main actors who interact in some kind of learning process. Um, and then of course, some of those links uh, would go outside. Some of them would go outside Brazil and refer to, to uh, a transnational uh, uh, value chain. But, but I guess uh, uh, much of it takes place uh, inside. Also, Swati mentioned um, the issue about exports. Um, I, I, I don't know if you're aware, but Merit in, uh, in, in Netherlands, uh, uh, they, they have done quite a lot of research on uh, wine industry and innovation in wine. Do you know that? Lynn Mitelka uh, was a pioneer. Uh, she did this kind of work uh, in the beginning of the millennium. And there is a very interesting PhD thesis on the wine industry in Chile and Argentina. Do you know that? Please unmute. No, no. I, I don't know this, this research, about it's this by, research. It's by an author, Farinelli. Are you looking and, for this, this, this and research? This, this is a very big thesis going a lot in detail uh, with the different technologies involved. And of course, the difference uh, between Chile and Argentina and Brazil is that Chile and Argentina are big exporters. So uh, when, when, you, when you say that Brazil has caught up, it, as far as I understand, it has not resulted in substantial exports. Is that correct? Yeah, Brazil don't export the, 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 the wines because the prices, uh, they, they don't have uh, competitiveness with the market um, here I uh, so the, the still uh, more expensive for the rest of the world. And okay. the, they don't have a, cap, a competitiveness capacity for the export. Okay. Uh, but but is, is that not in a sense, a sign that uh, they have not catch caught up? I mean, one problem with your method is that you mainly build uh, your results on interviews with people who are directly in the industry. And, and if they see a reality where they assume they have caught up, they're already at, at, at the front line in terms of technology, et cetera, uh, and still cannot export anything. I think there might be a kind of need for getting a more outside critical view on uh, the state of the industry. I mean, can you see that there could be a methodological problem uh, using insiders uh, who have a vested interest in saying how good they are mm, uh, as compared to taking a more critical view. So this is another thing I think you might uh, uh, think about. Um, so um, uh, I, I, I think also, of course, I saw some of the questions posed by participants 
uh, when they will say that there has been technological catching up, uh, you should specify uh, what technologies you are referring to, huh? and and at what and what are uh, I mean there could be uh, non-technological explanations. I mean the climate in Brazil might not be as nice to produce uh, fine wine as it is in Chile and Argentina, for instance. And, and, but still I would like you perhaps to go back to this PhD and try to compare your own findings uh, with the findings in, in, in that thesis. Uh, but good luck with your work. It's, it's very interesting issue and uh, it's very relevant for many countries uh, around the world. Uh, wine production is, is uh, a potential uh, area where you can move into high value added. Thank you. Thank you, Bento. Okay. Um, Carlo, please, uh, your comments. Yes, um, hello everyone. <clears throat> and, and thank you. Um, uh, so much to the organizers for inviting me here. I mean, it's such a great uh, opportunity to talk with so many people from different countries. I, I really, I would like to echo uh, the words of Ben, ben Toke, reminding ourselves uh, where we started. I mean, I was in the, the first uh, meeting uh, conference in, in, in Rio de Janeiro. And since then, look at how many people from different countries take part in these discussions. I mean, it's, it's, it's really great and congratulations to Ben Token and, and, and the group. Um, I, I like very much the, the, the paper. I think that the issue is very relevant, is very interesting. Uh, there's a number of uh, countries that are trying to produce uh, uh, wine at an international level and are trying to enter international markets in different ways. The 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 Production technology has uh, been uh, changed uh, remarkably over the last uh, 20 years, uh, so that even in, in advanced countries or countries with a long tradition of wine production, like my own uh, Italy, you see that economies of scale, for example, matter much less than before. And you can find that very small wineries producing excellent quality wines. And that's part of a technological change that has been uh, widespread in the industry. Um, I actually had prepared, I mean, the, the old habit of economists, to, uh, a couple of slides to, to help uh, 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 Patricia perhaps remember, remember some of these comments, uh, which are very much in line with what I, with what I heard so far. Uh, um, if, if I were to summarize uh, uh, your paper, uh, I would say that in some catching up occurred catching up was necessary and occurred uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. And that was essentially due to changes in, in demand. Uh, so new producers from uh, uh, other countries were penetrating uh, the Brazilian market. Uh, Carlo, and, we cannot yes, see the slides. We cannot, we cannot see the slides. So try oh, again. Let me, let me try again. <clears throat> Can you see it now? Not yet? One more try. Um, <clears throat> I, can, I can share the screen. Can you see it now? No. Oh, come on. To open it. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, try again. Can you see it? No? No way? All right, I'll, I'll do without it, don't worry. No. Okay. Okay, let me see. This is weird. Okay. Screen sharing has stopped. I mean, it, the system is telling me that I'm, I'm actually sharing something but maybe okay just 
one more second. Huh? Carlo, do you have more than one screen? Uh, no, no, no. I only have one. No, no. I only have one, but let me see. Uh, Can you see anything? No, all the same? No, okay, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll, I'll send the, the PowerPoint to Patricia afterwards, so that may help a memory. But uh, so essentially, uh, the story I, I, I seem to uh, understand from uh, uh, her presentation is that um, catching up occurred, Catching up occurred uh, in 2005, between 2005 and 2010. That was essentially due to a change in demand to, a, to a, an import penetration of wine produced in different countries. Uh, but now, uh, given that the frontier has been reached, Brazilian producers uh, use uh, the same technologies or uh, uh, equivalent uh, technologies uh, that is used elsewhere, there's no, there doesn't seem to be a, um, any more need of, of a catching up. And I'm surprised. I mean, I, when I was reading it, I said, well, really? Uh, first, uh, how can you state it? And this goes back to what uh, Ben Toke and, and Swati said before. So what is the, and, and several, several uh, people in the audience. So what is the benchmark? How do you measure and who do you, who do you compare um, um, wine producers in in Valle uh, with, uh, and 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 moreover, uh, it might be necessary uh, to uh, start the process of catching up, that um, so that uh, firms develop capabilities that uh, enable them to eventually uh, jump on the next wave of technological changes. So there's, there's the wine industry is experiencing a lot of different ways of producing and, and wines with different qualities and different alcohol content and uh, diabetic, uh, uh, diabetes free uh, wine and this and that. So I would consider that a process of catching up. So getting ready to uh, face the new challenges and eventually anticipating them. Uh, so you know, a, a, a better framing, a better definition of what the, you consider the world frontier, who uh, a Brazilian producers should, should compare to, uh, making an explicit focus on, on the export market as well. I mean, typically uh, comparing uh, the country's uh, uh, productions with uh, exporters is useful, not because exports are necessary per se, but because exporting typically reveals a, a, a good level of uh, production efficiency, a good level of, of, of quality of products and so on. So it's, it's export service as, as a benchmark against which to, to compare yourself. Um, and, and again, I mean, a catching up or, or a technological change would also be related to uh, what you uh, rightly focus, that one that is one of the problems uh, um, that 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 Brazil is facing, Brazilian producers are facing. That is the the uh, little uh, per capita wine consumption, which is much lower than other countries in the world. Uh, we know that Brazilians love beer more than wine in general, and uh, and that's part of uh, of a process. I mean, convincing people that drinking wine can be good. Or can be fun at least. I know whether it's going. It can be stated that it is good for your health, but definitely uh, good for your spirit. Uh, would itself be part of a process of technological changes. Um, uh, another uh, methodological remark that I think Ben Toke ben made uh, a minute ago was uh, on the on the. I mean the. The way you describe your results uh, uh, tend to be very optimistic, and they are probably very optimistic because they rely on the interviews you've made, and the interviews you made are with the interested stakeholders. So any entrepreneur you would uh, interview would probably say that 
he or she is is very good in something and and would be very hard to find somebody self criticizing or acknowledging that your uh that uh, you know and, and we all know that you know to be an entrepreneur you need to be ambitious and you need to be forward looking and you need to be really believe in yourself so uh in in your work i think you should try to uh, moderate the the emphasis on self assessments and introduce more objective or or speaking to to different stakeholders in the industry those that buy those that sell uh, workers uh, trainers uh, those that are more involved in the in the agricultural production those that are close to the market so that you can see the you know the dynamics of of the of the industry and 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 moderate the optimism that you would obtain by interviewing one kind of one kind of actor um i i had the same feeling and i would make the same remark when you started writing specifically about large firms small firms the differences uh arguing that small firms also have the advantage of greater agility and flexibility and uh, being a, essentially a, a one man show in many instances it's easier to make decisions but it's probably easier to make wrong decisions as well because you never have a counterpart that can balance your decision and it can be very hard to incorporate in your decisions knowledge and technology that is beyond your own knowledge uh whereas especially in this you know sophisticated uh, uh, natural resource based activities it is very important to get access to the best knowledge in the world uh, which it's impossible to have in one single region uh, be it italy france or brazil the same thing uh, you need to have access to 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 uh, foreign and different sources of technology um uh for example and and the and the, the, the this remark on large versus small um uh, i wonder whether you could uh that this my my first uh, argument about the economies of scale whether the economies of scale exist or do not exist and and the issue of anticipating markets and eventually uh knowing what the wind of the future will look like uh this is probably easier for large firms and small firms so it's true being more agile is 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 an advantage but you lose out on on many different fronts uh vis-a-vis -vis, uh large firms um I, i would like in in the paper i would like to read more about institutions and what they are and what kind of institutions you're talking about because there are many different institutions each of them needs to be shaped and, and structured differently uh so more evidence and a more solid analysis um uh would be needed or would or perhaps you've done it i don't know but from from reading your paper i didn't i didn't see enough uh, i had some i would have some doubts on the um, you easily moved from a concept of catching up at the national level uh, catching up at the sectoral level catching up at the firm level uh there are differences um uh, catching up at the national level is not only the aggregation of individual firms or individual sectors catching up there are um the aggregation is probably more uh more than the sum uh, there are interdependencies so um catching up in wine is perhaps easier if you have other sectors that are relevant for the wine sector that are also catching up uh producing uh i don't know the graphics of the of the of the labels is is a major marketing advantage in whatever you 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 sell a, a wine bottle in a in a shop or you know many examples can 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 be of that sort so uh, perhaps qualifying a bit the catching up at the micro at the macro at the sectoral the differences and so on would would further qualify the 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 paper and then now listening to you uh, uh, i had a couple of uh, remarks that uh, i hadn't thought about before but uh you don't seem to mention anything on clusters agglomeration economies uh i've seen the uh, bjorn ashem was there and others so there's a lot of work working a lot of work i myself contributed as well to cluster 
the analysis of different clusters and the ideas of uh, of um, agglomeration benefiting uh, firm performance uh, through a phenomenon like uh, a collective efficiency that our friend uh, Huber Schmitz coined uh, several years ago, and the work by Roberta Rabellotti and Andrea Morrison and Elisa and myself and many others, and 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 how to link this this cluster analysis with value chain analysis, because many years ago when when we we used to go to developing countries and small and study small firms, we uh, discovered the relevance of uh, clusters and agglomeration. But at the same time, we discovered that for many firms, it was also very important to be in touch with a big buyer, with a big supermarket or with, a, with an international chain that would be able to uh, help uh, commercialize and in many instances provide some technological advice. Uh, I wonder whether you could uh, consider part of this literature because that's 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 very relevant. And let me quote a paper of mine with with all the authors I just quoted, Andrea and Elisa, Giuliani and Roberta, and so on, which focuses on the wine industry in one specific dimension. That is the wondering whether the network or of researchers and knowledge producers and the network of wine producers talk to each other. So we, we, we made a, a social network analysis of uh, research and production of wine, the in individuals contributing to these networks. And we made a comparison uh, between South Africa and uh, what was that? Argentina and, and Italy. And, uh, and we tried to, 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 add, to answer the question whether knowledge is actually flowing thanks to the network of researchers or to the network of firms and whether they, they overlap or they remarkably differ. And we found different uh, answers in, different, in the different countries. That was a paper in, in uh, research policy some, some years back. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Carlo. Uh, now, uh, Patricia, if you wish to respond to the co comments, you may take five minutes maximum, please. Okay. Uh, first, thank you for your attention and your comments. I will be looking into my points in the uh, made and the improvement in my research. Some points I uh, had in my uh, master thesis. Uh, so here, when we uh, write the paper, we uh, focus in the, the concept of catching up, concept of uh, the, 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 the new leaps, but uh, the master thesis have, for example, the comparing about the, the markets, uh, benchmarking with uh, Argentina, Chile, uh, markets of uh, how uh, Italy, Exp uh, Spain and France, nah? uh, the institutions is about um, uh, uh, level uh, bring, bring to the, 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 the the wineries here from this, these countries for uh, learning there. So uh, in, in, uh, I, I think uh, I will put the, 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 others, the other uh, concept and the, the more details of uh, having the master thesis in my, um, in my paper. Uh, about the, the um, the, uh, the importance né, of analyzing the fine wine industry. Uh, the fact that this, this sector gives a great, a great add, uh, uh, value in the agribusiness uh, uh, of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, and when the, the, the happened, the catching up here, uh, occurred uh, since the open of trade in the 90s. And the conse uh, consequent entry of imported uh, wines uh, here, yeah? and um, and with competitive prices, has caused this industry to move from a structure uh, of fam family farming as a supplier of raw material to companies focused on uh, product uh, product quality, process improvement, and innovation business models. Uh, in this context, Vale dos Vinhedos has concentrated uh, efforts for this change in the profile of uh, wine produ uh, product production. 
including being the first Brazilian uh, region to have quality uh, certification of the office uh, vineyards with indication uh, of a region and denomination of uh, region. Some, uh, some points uh, uh, relevance, uh, uh, relevance to uh, the, this research and this, this, um, these uh, points have in the, the, the master thesis. So uh, I will need to uh, uh, bring to the, this paper. Uh, during the field research, uh, when the question about technological learning, and here uh, I try to, to focus in the, the learning and the capabilities to, to, to learn in the, the firms. Uh, então, uh, so uh, about the technological learning and the ability to assimilate the new technologies and uh, were analyzed. The answer was mostly along the lines that the companies, uh, each with the particular particular particularities, uh, can absorb, uh, assimilate, and adopt uh, innovations. Uh, what is possible to understand uh, at this time was the, that the wineries, uh, regardless of size, have in their daily reality the matter uh, of the technological learning, and they currently it's already part of their culture. Uh, they can overcome barriers to change and understand them as necessary for the growth of the companies and the industry as well the ability to assimilate and adapt uh, to realities uh, of each one. Uh, I, I explain this because uh, in the paper I try to, to focus in this, this, in this theme uh, about the, the capacity of uh, assimilate, uh, learning and assimilate and adopt uh, the, the new technologies. In my, in my uh, master thesis have the line uh, the timeline about the catching up occurred in 2005 and 2010. Oh, oh, uh, what happened in this time? In my uh, uh, master thesis, have this 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 explanation. So I will uh, 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 bring to 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 the the, master, the, the paper too because uh, uh, I, I explained the, the what happened, what changes in the market, what changes in the firms. And, and so I will, I will uh, bring to, to master thesis. Uh, uh, about the literature and innovation sector, sector uh, system states, the fine wine sector of Vale dos Vinhedos uh, presents the necessary pillar uh, when it comes to preparation for technological leaps. Uh, they are technological period. Today, they are uh, technologically uh, paired uh, uh, when you compare to France, uh, to Italy, to, uh, and so uh, uh, Spain. Uh, but it's uh, possible that if it, there is a new driver, the sector is prepared to promote a new catching up, uh, depend of demand. Uh, the sectoral system approach uh, has a dynamic uh, perspective and process view, which occurred uh, in the analyzed sector, including the cooperation process between firms. Uh, when you talk about cluster, uh, here uh, the, the behavior of this, this sector is uh, the, the cluster. Um, uh, according, according to the, the actors, uh, is also a crucial point for the development of a sector innovation system. Uh, lastly, uh, that is the industry, uh, industry today is faced with an important bar barrier uh, on demand size, uh, the prejudice of a national product uh, by the Brazilian consumer. Uh, the need to increase the demand for wine in the country and especially to give competitiveness. Now, uh, today, the problem is the competitiveness uh, in terms of price uh, uh, for these products. Uh, the governmental action in the industry providing the, redu the reduction of the tax burden 
and making the dom domestic pro the products more attractive uh, okay. when compared when can, important can, fine wine. I think you can continue in the discussion. Uh, during the discussion, we have uh, 20 minutes in the discussion uh, where you can uh, e explain. Please, please hold it for that uh, slot. Now, thank you very much. We will take all the questions uh, from the audience at the end. We have 20 minutes uh, for that. Uh, that. The next presentation uh, is by Rodrigo uh, and uh, from Federal University of Bahia, Brazil. Please, Rodrigo. Hi, good, uh, good morning. Here is still morning, morning to all. Uh, as Rajesh mentioned, I am Rodrigo. I'm from, in fact, I'm born in the south of Brazil, in the Serra Gaúcha region that Patricia uh, mentioned. <laughs> But uh, my PhD thesis is the, this work I will present for you is uh, I made in the Federal University of Bahia that is staying in the Northeast of Brazil under the supervision of Professor Hamilton. And uh, before of, uh, any more the presentation, I'd like to say the, the, I'd like to thank you for the great opportunity of being here and present this work for you. And I finished this PhD in the second half of 2020. So I have some time already. And we are, we are still working in published this in, in English. Uh, the PhD is wrote in Portuguese. So I have to make some adjustments. And this work calls the Brazilian Science Parks an evaluation exercise of their effects on the municipalities. And <clears throat> just a minute, just to make clear, this is about a policy evaluation kind of a study, but uh, in fact, it's about an innovation policy. And I believe this makes a huge difference uh, to how quantify and qualify uh, some kind of evaluation. Our object of the study was the science parks, the Brazilian science parks, I like to say the science parks are a, a weird object for uh, for economics because they uh, they don't have a clear definition to us. Uh, in fact, I didn't go deeper in this definition. Uh, we in this study we took a database from the government where they have the the Brazilian science parks descriptions and the phase of installation, operation, and project of this these science parks. And we adopt this as an, our definition. But broadly, we can say they are work uh, like a policy instrument to enhance university industry interactions and technological innovations. Uh, they begin in the 60s in the United States. The most knowledge is the Silicon Valley. Some can say the uh, Silicon Valley is not a science park, it's, it's more an inspir inspiration for the other science parks. Uh, after the after some the beginning in, in the United States, these experience experience migrate for uh, some initiatives in Europe, and after this in Japan, in Japan, <laughs> or the Japanese experience is that um, the experience that promotes science parks as a policy instrument for the all the world because they implement like an uh, industrial policy uh, format. And then science parks start to, to become understood, understand, understood such as a, a, a kind of industrial policy. Then in the ninth, uh, they spread in, in the, still in the eighth of uh, effect. They spread across the world. They arrived here in Brazil in eight five. And uh, in this first wave of, of uh, discussions about science parks, the, uh, the literature is very enthusiastic about their potentialities and their impacts and, and their, uh, their, their role to promote innovation. And um, one characteristic of this literature is that this literature is very focused on systematic impacts and um, and this is important in, the, in our research. Uh, after some time in the 90s with uh, neoliberal agenda uh, arising criticism into 
uh, industrial policies and size parks uh, between them. Uh, most uh, size parks uh, get over the 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 project's idea, uh, and they just come back after the 2000s, 2010s, uh, mostly with a, a rebranding idea because they start to to be selling like a, an innovation policy because you know industrial policies become obsolete so like innovation policy they become to be sell uh, in this new uh, other characteristic that is important in this work is that the literature about science parks after this time is more focused on the potentiality of science parks to to promote or to build uh, more innovativeness firms or more uh, promote uh, more yes promote more innovativeness firms and uh, this makes some difference because uh, the way we thought our research question uh, our research question was simple we we would like to know if the Brazilian experience with science parks worked or not and by work, we have to discover what this could mean. Uh, so based on evolutionary economic perspective, we, after some discussions, we, we found this, uh, we refine our question to, to ask if they impact their local innovation system. Local by local is a term that I will explain later, but uh, the idea is that, uh, the particularities of science parks, uh, they should have some systemic impact. If we are looking for innovation policy, we, we, should we should look for systemic impacts. And this is some of the, our uh, paths that we follow in this research. And by local, we, we, we imagine it that uh, because of the size of these science parks, they probably don't have a huge impact in the region or in the country, but they probably could have some impact on the locality where they were implemented. To answer this question, we followed three major steps. We first made an historical narrative about Brazilian experience, uh, starting by Brazilian industrial policies, then we search about Brazilian size parks. We focus just on the operational ones because we don't have much literature about. Then we perform an uh, empirical test to uh, objectively answer our question, our, our research question. And then we follow for a com computer now, uh, an agent-based model simulation where we we try to uh, emulate some some kind of science park implementation to give into the limitations of our empirical testing all the, the subjectives into this discussion we we, we try this uh, structure of of research about the historical narrative we we have some um, major characteristics that I like I like to highlight here. Uh, most, uh, first, the mostly of the science parks in Brazil, the operational, in, of course, in fact, uh, they are located in the south and southeast regions. These regions are the richest regions in the country. And this probably uh, Makes sense at some point, but uh, in the in a policy design, maybe not completely. And uh, more in, we have uh, some three major waves in this um, in this emerging of science parks. The first in the in the eighties and the nineties, uh, in the beginning of the, the the science parks in Brazil, and one the third. More and more important after the 2000, that when it spreads several initiatives around the country. Um, another issue uh, I like to, to highlight here is that uh, mostly these science parks doesn't become um, 
operational. Uh, mostly of them is still our project. Uh, several steps to become operational size parks and, and involve us, uh, different actors. And uh, we understand these uh, talk a lot about some kind of social or political ca capability. And this is why we understand this concentration in the South and Southeast regions uh, can manifest this kind of uh, capability, the, this kind of specific capability. This is something that is important in, in our conclusions. Uh, I will bring back later this also. For our empirical test, we implement a simple econometric test with a diff diff difference in difference uh, equation. Our depend variable is a proxy for local innovation system. And we choose as a treatment a municipality with an operational size parks. And uh, the control is a municipality with a non operational size parks, but probably in implementation or in project phase. And of course, the, stru the structural change we obtain in this equation in the means the impact of the size parks in this innovation system idea. To talk about innovation system, I have to, to under this, we make a assumption, assumption, we can say a big assumption that uh, we can uh, transport this idea of national innovation system sector of system, regional innovation system, in a, a lower dimension that we are calling, calling a local innovation system because of this, uh, and here I put this quotation of Nelson that uh, because it, this underlying relation and uh, social relations, uh, cultural relations, historical path dependence relations, we can uh, find in, in localities to so we, we make this assumption is also a simplification to in order to put, promote this kind of analysis. And uh, the other question is once we, we assume this idea, how we can quantify this measure, this proxy. So we base on two works of Chirilo, Chirilo and colleagues in Fagerberg and Schorleck. Uh, where they apply factor analysis to, to compare uh, national innovation systems from different countries. So we, we appropriate this idea, uh, compute by year, by set of municipalities, uh, uh, by the principal component uh, measure, uh, a proxy that in our understanding is underlying relations between a productive system, a scientific system, and a technological system in each group of municipalities. To do this, we built a data set with 212 variables based on secondary, secondary information. We, I have to say our database is, uh, is, is, like, is a little biased to productive system because we have much more variables that could uh, talk about productive system. And uh, scientific system, we also have some considerable quantity. Technological system is the more hard to, to bring proxies or, or indicators to considering this analysis. Uh, also, we have to make some kind of identification process here because uh, municipalities that have size park are not exactly comparable. The size park also doesn't be starting in the same year. So we have to proceed some, uh, uh, some cuts in the base to uh, identify comparable municipalities to proceed this econometric test. Here I have some explanation, but maybe maybe it's not so interesting to go deeper in this. Uh, but we apply some some matching strategies and some cuts based on some on indications. Here to make it to explain a little or to to show for you a little better this idea is that the DB1 uh, database is all 
the size parks that we had in 2016 is the final date of the data set we got from the government. They have different phases of installation. Our focus or our treatment is the operational ones. So if you look in the B2 data set that is restricted just to operational and implementation size parks, and just that then uh, that start after 1998, you can see how concentrate in the south and the southeast, southeast, southeast regions in the country. The B3 database is a subset of B2 uh, that we identify more comparable municipalities based on traditional measures and even more concentrated. The results of this test, uh, in fact, we, we identify a structural uh, impact, uh, or in other words, the size parks that become operational in, in the B2 database uh, have a, a statistical significant impact. We can see here they are positive impacts uh, because these equations four, five, and six uh, correspond to B2 database. But when we look in the results of B3 database, we see this sign uh, invert, become negative. Uh, we uh, don't have interpretation for the sign of this result. Our goal was uh, identifying a structural change in this we found. Uh, the sign, we are, we are not sure if it uh, makes sense propose some kind of a cardinal uh, interpretation of innovation system. Uh, I believe and we believe is a little more complex than this. But the way we process this, this uh, computation, our proxy, our analysis uh, also, uh, also means to us this correspond to a specific innovation system, the B2 database because of the set of municipalities in the way we compute the, these proxies are talking about a, a one specific kind of innovation system that is common to this set of municipalities, while the B3 databases are talking with, to, about other kind, other characteristics uh, of innovation system. Uh, of course, the, the results we found in the empirical test were uh, were not robust and uh, we, we, we cannot generalize these results to whatever experience. And then we, uh, with this idea, we, we, with this issue, we decide promote promote a, a simulation, uh, agent-based simulation, uh, in order to verify some ideas that we got during this research. Agent-based models, uh, I have some reference here. Uh, uh, I believe in our, uh, our field is more a knowledge about uh, agent-based models, so I, I won't explain much about. Uh, the strategy that we implement to redesign implement to agent-based model was uh, take uh, an existing agent-based model and implement some station that we can configure it uh, some kind of scientific parks in this uh, in this model and test the results in aggregate variables. So we took this um, multi-sector micro 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 dynamic model from Dweck that have some Canadian, Kalekian, and Shutterian foundations that is important to us because we are talking about innovation. And uh, we simulate some characteristics of science parks based on literature. The first, uh, we, we simulate, we try to insert uh, biggest technological opportunities. That is uh, a result much emphasized in the first literature I mentioned before the 90s. The second is the big R&D effort that is emphasized in the modern literature about science parks where they they emphasize this role of the firm in the research of the firm. And the third is just a, a ordinary fact that always in science parks, we have subsides about for the implementation of this park. So we also 
try this to see what we got from these results. The simulation, we made eight configurations, one baseline without any specification, uh, when, and without any additional specification, and seven other with different combination of these characteristics I mentioned before. We made uh, 100 simulations each of these configurations with 600 periods, and we it with 200 firms. This is just general characteristic of the model. And the results, we evaluate in appreciative uh, and in a qualitative way of these results uh, by aggregate variables. Uh, was more, more uh, exploratory exercise than the, a test, in fact. And what we got from this is that uh, technological opportunities uh, perform strictly better than, than R&D and then subside. And this result we understand after this is they reinforce the idea of systemic impacts because this technological opportunities is the is some approximation we could make in the model to, to a systemic impact, the, the capacity to get something uh, from the underlying uh, structure of the system and not from just uh, self-research or just from one innovative firm. One characteristic, uh, we, we also suppose this could be uh, indicative for a, a possible role of a, an entrepreneurial state that could take uh, some part of these uh, technological opportunities. And this is basically our major conclusion that we, our intuition from the beginning of the study that uh, the assessment and innovation pol policy should pay attention to systemic impacts. In part, this is a, a little critical we made to recent literature about science parks, but of course, uh, several results we they got in this literature literature we use in our simulations so uh, it's always uh, it's, it's important uh, have a broad perspective and um, we found in our empirical test that uh, Brazilian size parks in fact have a, a in that specific case a positive impact. However, we cannot interpret that, interpret that this positive uh, sign in their local innovation system. Uh, but this emerged from a specific selection of, of municipalities in the South and Southeast region. And we uh, add this reflect a specific innovation system. And also by our historical narrative, we identify in this region some kind of uh, social or political uh, capacity. Sorry, I left here in Portuguese. And um, this makes uh, us think about uh, what the uh, what is happening in these in these uh, locations. Um, in part, we we comment the, this idea in this part of policy suggestions about the socialized policy benefits from the, the initiative, most because we cannot say, okay, we, we identify uh, an impact, on uh, a structural impact of size parts, but we don't know about what this impact means. We don't know if it is positive for society, is a concentration, is just sharing costs from, uh, dominant groups uh, when we look to history of brazil and uh, the context of brazil we know these inequalities uh, make a, a large place here and uh, we don't know if this social uh, how how uh, work with this uh, policy of this social capital how make this uh, this work to the general society uh, some other policy suggestions, uh, the, the role of uh, stimulations uh, is uh, some, some we are enthusiastic about. The, we, science parks, we cannot perform random control trials, so we, we have to, to try something to design some, the policy. 
simulations is a good alternative under this idea. Uh, the control and av availability of information, we had, uh, we had a hard time to, to find this data set. And uh, in part, we believe this can talk about this social and political capital, because if you don't, don't have information and deal with this information, we are doesn't building this kind of capital or capability. And uh, of course, more studies always to understand the specificities of innovation system. As I mentioned, is we are dealing with different objects each time we select a group of municipalities. Uh, to who uh, have interest in learning Portuguese, <laughs> I have this thesis uh, open, uh, available. Uh, but in Portuguese, I, I wrote in Portuguese these, these ideas. And uh, part of the data set we use is also available, uh, but also in Portuguese, uh, I didn't translate. Uh, I still uh, working to, to make all available, but uh, life become complicated in the last years. Uh, some references, and I'd like to thank all for the opportunity again. Yes. Thank you, Rodrigo. Now, um, I invite Veronica to discuss. You have 10 minutes, sir. Okay, thank you, Rajesh. Thank you very much for allowing me to make these comments to Rodrigo. I like very much his paper. I, I, uh, I found that uh, he has a strong research design there uh, with a nice articulation with a, a a historical analysis of clusters uh, uh, of science park in, in Brazil, a statistical analysis regarding the impact of those science science park on the innovation local innovation system, and also uh, this uh, simulation exercise. I think all of these three components are interesting, interestingly articulated each other and. Uh, uh, give a nice picture about what has happened uh, with uh, Science Park in Brazil. I read in his paper uh, a hypothesis that is very well framed in evolutionary framework uh, in which those science and technology park has an impact on, uh, on, on local innovation system, but also uh, in those systems in which the capacities are greater, the possibilities of those parks to, to grow and blossom are greater. So they identify a kind of feedbacks between uh, the creation of Science Park and the evolution of the local system of innovation. And uh, my comments are uh, based on the, the, the document that he sent, uh, that is a, a short, uh, extended abstract and uh, the PPT. I, afterwards, I, 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 I look at the, 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 the whole thesis uh, in the repository uh, and I found that many of my questions are answered there. So the, the, the following observation, you, you should take them uh, a kind of guide to take what you already have in your thesis and bring those uh, uh, informations and data and uh, arguments to enrich your paper. So uh, I will, I will, I, I will uh, organize this in three steps uh, for each one, for each of the components of the methodology uh, that he developed. So, Regarding historical analysis, I found that you should have more storytelling analysis uh, on, on, on what is happening on uh, science park creation, which what, what are the specific policy in which those parks are created, which are the resources, uh, how many uh, of those parks are created in each wave. You 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 pointed out uh, several waves. You 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 made a lot of uh, interesting uh, attempt to classify those parks. But 
I would like to found some statistical background to show how those parks are uh, distributed in the different categories that you create, you know, waves, uh, location, uh, phases, uh, yeah, a phase in which they are uh, currently now, if they are project or they are implemented or they are operative. So I, I would like to, to have uh, some statistical information uh, to, to understand uh, the, the, the whole picture. Um, that you have in your thesis, but it's not in the in the paper. So also, I would like to know if you have some statistical about the time, uh, the, 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 the time that that takes in average from the project to the implementation of the park, and also if you have identified some uh, factors or elements that predict that the park is uh, finally uh, reach the operational status or when they just remain in uh, the project phase. Um, uh, also, I think you should uh, exploit the linkages between the statistical part and the storytelling and historical analysis, uh, trying to to use the same categories. So the database one, two, and three, I would like to see uh, those categories in the storytelling uh, section that uh, I didn't found that. Uh, finally, regarding this section, I see that you say that there are uh, social capital uh, that explain uh, to some extent the, 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 the successful of those parts. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, those successful cases uh, are uh, related to um, private private uh, uh, endeavors and uh, stadual policies. Meanwhile, federal policies uh, look at creation, look at creation in visions, uh, in, in, in backward regions, visions that are uh, less developed, like northwest of Brazil. So I wonder if, uh, is there another objectives in those creation of those parks. The, the, what are the goals of federal government to create parks in those uh, poor regions? Are the development of science and technology, are the development of employment, are the development of uh, industrial capabilities? So uh, in, in this regard, I wonder if it's uh, fair to compare all those initiatives with the same uh, uh, I, in Spanish, you say with the same vara, with the same uh, dimension, with the same status, because um, they they were they were created with different objectives. So I I would like to just if you have some ideas to to elaborate on this, I would really like. Regarding the econometric analysis, I found it very interesting. I think uh, is a is a good. A way to 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 test your hypothesis on the impact of class of, of, of technology park creation on, on innovation system local innovation system so I I don't have uh, too much to say about that but uh, I would like to I, I, I would like to, to found more details on how the factor analysis was uh, developed I you say that you have used 212 variables. Uh, I, how do you know that the first factor uh, is the well uh, choice uh, to capture the whole variability of those variables? Are there a second factor orthogonal to the first one that capture other uh, dimension of the innovation system that should, that should take into account? Um, and um, finally, uh, if you um, 
there is a question about uh, if you found uh, if you if you found uh, satisfied about how this variable captured the idea of local innovation system regarding especially regarding that in this seminar we are uh, trying to 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 discuss uh, how to assess innovation system empirically, empirically. so are, are you uh, are you satisfied with your results uh, are you agree with what you find um, and um, one more thing about the econometric one more thing about the econometric exercise, I think that you should, you, you, you can provide some uh, graphical, um, graphical uh, uh, evidence that show your, your, your hypothesis. I could uh, present a graph with the trend of the factor one variable, uh, average for all those municipalities with parks and an average for all those uh, control municipalities. So you can see if in the time zero, which would be the time in which the park will become operative, uh, there are a, a, a change in the trend uh, regarding the, the, the previous one. So I, I think this, this, uh, this, this kind of uh, graph are very useful to to see intuitive uh, what then the results are showing to you. And I, I would make several of these, those graphs with different groups of, uh, of, 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 of municipalities. So perhaps in this kind of graph, you can, uh, you can discover what has happened with the sign in your progression, what, why those sign is changing. And finally, regarding to the last part, um, the Asian-based modeling strategy. I not, I have nothing to say here because I uh, the, the information is in the paper is not uh, is not very very much and, uh, and 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 also I don't know very much about those, those methodology. Just to say that I found that it's very interesting that you provide some exercise that that analyze micro macro interactions i think is very useful to 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 stop talking only with uh, ministry of, of science and technology and stop and start to talking also with finance ministries i think we should have to 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 have an, an agenda trying to trying to show the economic impact of those parks beyond uh, capabilities and, uh, and, and, and and opportunities and, and research and, and development opportunities and start to see what is the impact on uh, GDP, on employment, on investment, etc. So congrats, Rodrigo, for your work. And it was very nice for me to comment your, 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 your paper. Thank you. Thank you, Vero. Excellent timing. And Carlo, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Rodrigo. Congratulations for the choice of the topic. It, this is very relevant, and especially for, for, from the point of view of policy advice, because you see so many governments and international organizations using uh, <laughs> the different uh, concepts of science, technology, uh, export processing, special zones, uh, uh, tax-free zones and this and that use so casually that uh, you know making an effort to to classify, making an effort to address this issue explicitly and and carefully is is very relevant. And I also agree very much with the, uh, the importance of uh, evaluations. We need solid evaluations. So, uh, we often uh, uh, you know state uh, um, policy advice uh, in, in in a casual form, whereas. Uh, you know, we should be able, we should uh, become more and more able to uh, evaluate uh, uh, <laughs> policies like this very uh, carefully. I also agree with the, your statement that uh, uh, parks uh, um, are meant to affect relationships and are meant to affect the innovation system. So there is a systemic uh, 
uh, notion behind the uh, science and technology park, which is intrinsic and uh, uh, needs to be uh, explicitly studied and evaluated. Um, however, I, I, I didn't see the, your thesis, I confess. Uh, so I was I was uh, I found the, the abstract and the, the the PowerPoint a bit thin in terms of the definition of the science and technology park, because they may reflect very different objectives, very different rationales. Uh, Veronica summarizes very 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 uh, effectively, uh, and in some cases, let me add one more one more issue. Uh, uh, science and technology parks sometimes are not policy instruments. They are created uh, spontaneously. There is a whole business of uh, uh, intermediaries that set up uh, parks of different kinds, uh, maybe not so much science, but definitely technology, commercial, tax-free, and so on, which uh, make it as a private business. And, and there's no policy intention behind that. Uh, so, you know, it's very important to really um, define exactly. And, and I came across uh, um, some papers that were recently uh, studying this issue and presenting different approaches. And, and for example, um, it's, it's in my slides that I guess uh, Rajas can distribute uh, later. Uh, but for example, there's, uh, you know, simply looking at the issue of who is financing and who is managing the parks make them uh, incredibly different. And, and, and German models or Chinese models or, or Danish models or UK models are very different, only looking at these two dimensions, financing and management, whether it's private or public. Uh, not to mention the, the issue of stakeholders behind the parks. Uh, and the stakeholders defining the mission and the strategic goals of the park. So in some cases, these parks are a sort of spin-offs of, of university activities, or they, are, or, or they are intentionally created by governments or universities uh, as a place where the university will, will definitely uh, play a central role. Or in other cases, they are the result of a coalition of, of business and a local government of, or, or small, some businesses willing to attract uh, and, and locate uh, their suppliers in the same region and, and on and on. Or, uh, you know, uh, in some cases, it, it can be even clusters or agglomerations of existing firms that realize that they also need a technological dimension and therefore they would need a, a center for research of technology that sometimes might associate itself to university and so on. So these whole things uh, matter a lot for, for your analysis. So I, I, I guess in your thesis, you do it more carefully than in the paper, but just to mention that the definition is, is, is so central in all these kind of analysis. Um, on the empirical test, uh, on, on the, let me say uh, a few things on the, the, on the historical approach, which, which I like very much, but uh, I think uh, uh, in your case, you should be clear from, from the outset on what you export features of the historical path you think were more relevant. So what you say, you rightly say, let's look at history and what happened in the park, but what are you looking for there? Uh, what are the features that, you, that uh, most interest you? Like creation, how was the park created, who created, what was the spark that generated this? Um, what were the pre-existing conditions? This is so relevant for policy advice. Uh, can you create a park anywhere? Or can you create a park only if some elements that coexist or pre-exist? Um, and, 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 and likewise, uh, a look at the, I mean, in, again, and still in the historical approach, looking at the previous history of firms, of sectors, of universities, research centers. I mean, uh, I'm sure that uh, science and technology parks perform differently depending on whether an industrial sector is of one kind or another. It's, it's very dynamic and prominent or is just emerging. It's, it's in a, I mean, some parks have been created to, to address the issue of uh, industrial sectors in crisis as a policy to uh, moderate the impact of the crisis of, of sectors. So again, you know, uh, history would help more if you were more specific in stating what you're looking for 
when you interview and you 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 do the uh, historical uh, analysis of other various parts. Uh, <clears throat> on the on the second on the empirical test on the um, on the on the second part, not the agent based simulation. I I was a bit um, uh, uncertain and doubtful about uh, the decision you made uh, to consider the local innovation system as uh, the dependent variable, because I would see it as I would see the local innovation system as an intermediate result, almost an instrument or or an element that would uh, uh, help the, the the location be or become more. Uh, developed socially or more environmentally friendly or more innovative but the actual outcome the final final result would should be measured in terms of firms performance or in terms of an, um, environmental performance or, or or something else but really in the results of the of the of firms and and the households living in the in the system so the, I, I would see the system as a, as an intermediate and as an intermediate step Towards the promotion, to, towards the achievement of, of greater innovation, and therefore uh, I, I have a bit doubt. I would, I would, I don't know uh, how many. I know you, you considered so many variables. I don't know to what extent you managed to consider firm level performance. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm perhaps too much uh, in favor of, of, of firms, and, and and you know, I think that enterprises have a central role in development, but. Uh, a, 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 a well-functioning um, technology park would also engage uh, um, uh, firms uh, that uh, um, achieve a, a good level of performance. Um, in, in in terms of the, I guess, for example, another issue that you 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 consider in your analysis was the the one related to, uh, to the. Um, the, the municipality and the size of the municipality. So I guess municipalities are of very different sizes. Um, um, in your experience, did you encounter one park in one municipality or perhaps two parks in one municipality or maybe one park in a small municipality can really make the difference. Uh, one park in a large municipality makes no difference at all. And therefore, you know, controlling for all this, perhaps you did it in your your analysis, I, I don't know. Um, and, and I was not clear about the difference between implementation, operational project phase of the park. If you think that the phase in which a park is, is relevant for its impact, you should probably explain it and say, perhaps, let me, let me explain this better, uh, perhaps, Already, the statement and the intention of a local government to set up a science park can have a positive impact on the local innovation system without doing anything, but just stating and, and committing the very initial resources. So it doesn't matter how well the park behaves, but that signals that the local government is willing to engage. And, 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 or you can elaborate on these things, but if you think that the phase in which the park is in is relevant for its impact, uh, stated explicitly and 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 considered as a as a possible hypothesis to test. Um, on the agent-based simulation, I'm, I'm I'm not an expert. Uh, it, I mean, from the paper, it, it's hard to understand uh, much. Um, one question: um, uh, I didn't understand whether the uh, your statement that selected firms have incremental differences of technological opportunities, research and development efforts, and tax subsidy. Is, is it an assumption that typically happens, or is it a result? Is it an outcome of what you, you want to, to state? Because if that is an assumption, that would be weak in my mind. So we, you would already be incorporating into the agent based model what you would hope. The model uh, could generate. Um, uh, all right. Um, uh, one one very final uh, remark um, that I, it's more for future research. 
uh, there's, there's, there's a trend that is focusing more and more, more and more on the on the relevance of demand oriented science and technology policies. And and we acknowledge that many times uh, uh, science, technology, and Western policies have been have been too much supply driven. Um, do you think uh, science parks could be and how uh, or could incorporate and how uh, demand oriented uh, uh, innovation policies as well? Because I mean, a weakness, an obvious weakness, would be remaining only or mainly a supply side, a supply oriented uh, innovation policy, uh, where one never knows what innovation is produced, what policy is producing is really what firms and households would like to have. Okay, I can stop here and thank you. It was very interesting reading it. Thank you, Paolo. Professor Bainte. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with uh, many of, of the comments. Uh, I would like to uh, start by saying that uh, the format of um, this uh, seminar uh, is uh, quite demanding both for um, those who present and those who give comments. Uh, I mean, uh, if you write the thesis, uh, I guess it's several hundred pages and uh, uh, lots of um, information. And you have to bring that together on three or four pages and a couple of slides. Uh, of course, there will be a lot of information uh, which are not passed on. Uh, and therefore uh, our comments, uh, some of them uh, will necessarily uh, fall beside because uh, your answer is already in, in your work. Hmm? Uh, another, and this is addressed both to, to, to both speakers. Uh, and and uh, uh, second, I think, could be relevant for both speakers. Sometimes it's interesting to um, compare success with failure. Uh, in the case of the wineries, I guess not all uh, of the wineries who tried to transform and catch up were successful. And it would have been interesting to see what characterized those who had success with those who did not. Uh, in the same way, I think uh, when it comes to science parks, uh, some of them might have had a major impact uh, at the national level. Some of them might have a major impact on the regional level, and some would have a major impact on municipal, municipal level. But I also guess some of them had very little or perhaps even negative impact on one or more of these levels. And, and to compare, success and failure. I mean, it goes back to, to the Sattfo uh, uh, innovation study where you compared uh, success and failure uh, between uh, different organizations. That, that I think could be uh, an interesting uh, method. I have one question on, on um, science parks. And uh, my question is, uh, uh, at what level do you define the municipality? I mean, uh, how big is a typical municipality? Uh, could you perhaps answer that uh, uh, immediately? Yes, uh, municipality professor is, uh, in fact, is, uh, is the, how, how can I say this, is the, the, how many federal people? Or, federal organization vary, vary a lot. In Brazil, we have 5,000 municipalities. We have from 5,000 person people in a city to 10,000, 10, 10 million uh, of person. So, so vary how, a lot. How, how many municipalities are included in your econometric study? 
I don't recall, I don't recall right now. It's around, around 20, 20, 20 municipalities. It's not How many? so much. 20. How many? 20. 20. Yes. Okay. Because okay. We, we work just with the municipalities that have a science park. Oh, so yeah. It's a, a restricted. So set. the sample is not enormous, huh? No, no. Okay. Uh, could you, um, I, li I like to do this in a kind of interactive way. So could you, uh, in a few sentences, tell me uh, what is the main outcome of your econometric exercise? In, in your own words, not too complicated, but just tell me uh, what we can learn from it. Yes, my main result here is that the operational size park, the, the phase after I can explain better, but once the size park is operation, he has an impact on systemic level, on innovation system. And uh, this is my what major kind, result. What kind, of what kind of impact? So this is what I cannot answer because we have different signs and also we don't have a, a full uh, interpretation about the, the measure we, we built for innovation system. We just uh, took an underlying relations by factor analysis, and we measure if these uh, relations change after the size park become operational in that municipality in relate to municipalities that have a non-operational size park. So, our test was in this sense, they have some impact, yes or not. Okay. And, and do you have any idea if, uh, if the technolo science technology profile is similar between these 22 or if they are very different? We try to make a, a comparable set. Uh, we we compute the, that uh, we make different data sets of municipalities. We compute this proxy for innovation system, and then we made a matching, uh, propensity matching strategy to, to find comparable municipalities. So- Yeah, but I, I, I think about the science parks. I mean, are some of them specialized in information yes. communication technology? Others are specialized no. in agriculture technology or something? Yes, like they, they have different uh, expertises, and, but we didn't focus on science parks. We focus on the municipalities. So we search for these, the innovation system or, the, or of the municipalities without, okay. without uh, taking account the, the expertise of the science park. Most because the information is not clear, it's not available, it's always hard to, to find the, the goals of science parks. Even the data they become operational is not clear in, in okay. for how. So okay. we, we so, made some uh, simplifications. Uh, I think Carlo uh, said that, and Veronica, that, that it could be useful to go deeper into the qualitative characteristics uh, before doing the quantitative analysis. I mean, my assumption is that uh, some of these technologies uh, will have a major impact uh, at the national level. I mean, uh, I know in Sweden, uh, we have uh, Vinova programs on uh, this kind of uh, triple helix clusters um, where uh, some university go together with some specialized uh, uh, technological leading firms and established activities. And uh, you, you sometimes establish uh, science technology parks in connection with that. And, and I assume that, that here uh, the, the basic motivation is not to create local development, but it's actually to create uh, national development so that the big lead companies uh, can draw upon university knowledge uh, in a more direct fashion. So I'm just saying that uh, I guess that if you do an assessment, uh, a policy assessment, 
uh, I think you must start with what Carlo referred to, who are actually initiating uh, the science technology park. Is it a university? Uh, then the university has some objectives of its own. Is it a private company? Uh, then they have their own, uh, or is it the region? Uh, and, and if so, or is it uh, nationwide? So I think uh, it would be uh, useful to combine a little more qualitative uh, with your quantitative analysis. But, but as I said in the beginning, probably I'm unfair. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's not really, fair to uh, comment on, on uh, so little information you can share with us uh, in, 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 in this format. And ideally we should have people reading Portuguese, uh, reading your whole thesis and give uh, much more qualified uh, uh, comments. I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't do that, but because I don't, uh, I guess Carlo, you read Portuguese or what? Yeah, you should do that huh? if you have time. <laughs> but I, I, think, <laughs> I think, of course, this is, uh, I have a few other uh, general comments. Uh, you start by Silicon Valley. And, and I think one interesting point is that uh, the kind of exchange of knowledge doesn't go only from universities, Stanford, uh, et cetera, uh, uh, Ber Berkeley, et cetera, to, to the local industry, it goes the other way around. And I think one of the major uh, contributors to that insight is Nathan Rosenberg, uh, uh, who, I mean, you can ask the question, uh, did uh, Silicon Valley become successful because of the universities or did the universities become successful because of ICT enterprises, which were leading the world in, in technology and were ahead to, to, to universities. So I think in general, when you study uh, science parks and other types of, of cluster formation, it's important to, to take into account uh, the mutual interaction between uh, the supply and demand for knowledge. and, and the quality of both are extremely important. So if you establish a, a science park uh, at a reasonably good university and the demand side is extremely weak, I mean, if, if, if the industrial structure is not such as you have qualified demand for knowledge, you shouldn't expect to have any impact. So uh, that's one point I think, uh, 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 should be taken account into when you look at science parks. Uh, another literature um, is actually uh, more on the impact of science parks on, on uh, firm behavior and firm performance. And uh, I will, uh, 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 there, there are some Swedish guys, Lövsten is one of them, who, who worked on this in the beginning of uh, 2002 or something like that. I, I will post uh, the reference uh, uh, in a second on our comment uh, limit. But of course, what you are doing, uh, as Carlo said, is extremely important uh, in terms of uh, developing evaluation of uh, policies. And, and uh, I think you are, very ambitious uh, in, in trying to develop new methods uh, to look at that. And, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I cannot give full justice to, to your work because uh, you are, we have so little uh, room for exchange of information, but good luck with your work, Rodrigo. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bentoki. I think we have uh, finished with uh, the comments now. Um, would Rodrigo like to respond to the to the com comments made by uh, the four commentators? Uh, you can do that. You can take five minutes. Okay, thank you, Rajesh. Um, 
I'd like to thank uh, everyone for their comments. Uh, I believe it's very, I also have very issues around this research. It was a very challenging research to, 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 to proceed. Um, several talks that were mentioned, we, we face, uh, not necessarily we, we solve them, uh, the questions that uh, Professor Veronica uh, brought about the sectors and the descriptions of the science parks. Um, okay, several, well, some things <laughs> I have in the thesis, but not all of them. I believe this lack between the historical narrative and the empirical test uh, really, in fact, they, they exist. <laughs> I have this limitation. And uh, several, we, we lack in several kind of data to explore the science parks. In fact, when we start to, to explore, we had two paths. The first was, was uh, explore one science parks and, and go deep in, deeply in these science parks uh, with uh, field research. And the other that I appreciate more is that this national com comparable uh, comparability. And uh, we, we proceed with several limitations based on database. The, the phases that uh, I believe Professor Khan mentioned, the phases that uh, the time between one, oper one part uh, was idealized to become operational vary. We don't have this information about Brazil. In literature, this is about 10 years. Then we, the phases we, we identify in the, in the historical uh, approach. Uh, the project is the first step. So the project is the design, the idea. Uh, this came from sometimes from private initi initiatives, sometimes from local governments, uh, regional governments. And, uh, mostly after the 2000s with, uh, by the government, uh, federal government initiative, that they, they have this, this goal to more regional development and uh, the science park was part of this policy. But the goals, the, the, the expertise, the results, this is very uh, limited information about science parks. Then, uh, then uh, this is one reason why we choose to look to municipalities because with municipalities we have the data. So we, we have this, this data that regional and we, and this match with, with our hypothesis that a systemic impact. So this is one, uh, one limitation in the process of the design of this research. About the empirical test, uh, the dependent variable, we, we work with the innovation system proxy that we built uh, because of our, our research questions. So we mentioned if they work, they have to impact their innovation system. So it, this is why we designed this way, the, our econometric equation. And um, yes, uh, Professor Veronica, uh, I'm not uh, fully satisfied with the, my proxy. I believe have some ways to compute, to give more information. We, we built up a panel with this information. We take the again vector of the principal component that the principal component respond for more than 8% of the variation of the data. This is why we, we accept this, uh, this information as the, the proxy. And, um, and by each year, we compute the eigenvector to each set of municipalities. So we built a panel, and this panel is, is the, the variable we use in our economic test. In the simulation, uh, Professor Carlos, Carlo, uh, we main, we, the, I believe is a, one assumption uh, indeed what we made, because the, how do we, we have the agent based model. We have several firms that interact with each other. Uh, 
uh, by self-interest, uh, self-behavior. Uh, and this, uh, this interaction result in aggregate variables, the, the aggregate results. So what we do, what we did, in fact, was took some one part of these firms in this model, and we set characteristics that we find in literature, in the literature about science parks. What uh, the literature say, when we have a science parks, we have this impact on firms. So we've set this, or the older literature that when we have science parks, we have a systemic impact on on, on the local you know, on the on the location. So was based on this idea, we made this uh, characterization. The original idea was build an agent-based model, but this was too, too, uh, too hard to, to do in this research. So I'm sorry because I, I get lost between the English and the notations, but I, I hope we can answer part of, of your comments. Uh, Professor Lundvall, even with the limitation of the seminars, uh, I thank a lot for all the comments and the opportunity of being here. Uh, to me, it's a great honor, and uh, I thank a lot. Thank you, Rodrigo. Now we move on to the, uh, the, the, the open discussion part. We are actually running out of time. Uh, so, so I suggest we have received quite a a number of questions. So I suggest uh, uh, the, the participants who want to ask, read out the questions, do that quickly in a condensed manner, not elaborate questions. Uh, and uh, Patricia and Rodrigo can answer at the end. Uh, there are also one or two questions to the commentators. So uh, I first invite uh, Shigui uh, Du, who is a who is a regular participant of our, our programs. Uh, he has two questions, one to Patricia, one to Rodrigo. Uh, Shigui, please. Hello, good evening. Uh, for Patricia, uh, my key question is uh, about the benchmark for the uh, technology uh, catching up. So maybe um, I really want to know what is the uh, uh, criteria for Patricia to define the benchmark of uh, technology. Uh, can, um, so uh, whether it is uh, uh, you know, the local uh, leading um, company or in the international leading company. And then another question is, uh, uh, what is the uh, dynamic uh, features of the uh, uh, catching up of the uh, technology uh, innovation in the well, wining uh, industry. Maybe um, it's, uh, I think it's a key uh, question to explain the dynamic feature in the catch up uh, process. And um, for uh, Rido Rogo, my key question is that, uh, um, how the uh, uh, supporting policy to you know, uh, aid the uh, combining of the uh, uh, key stakeholders uh, in uh, you know, establishing and the development of the science, um, science uh, parks such as the government or the farms? Because I think, uh, you know, just as the proper uh, band explained that uh, we didn't know uh, who is the uh, key uh, players to launch the uh, science park. I think we, if uh, 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 Rito Rigo can you know, explain uh, much well how the uh, key stakeholders you know, work together to you know, facilitate the uh, development of the science park is very uh, you know, key. <laughs> in his uh, research. Thank you. Okay, now, um, Andrew, similarly, Andrew have uh, two questions, one to Patricia and one to Rodrigo. Please, please, Andrew, please. Well, thank you very quickly. You can see them in the comments to Patricia. Thank you to both. Um, this format is rather challenging. Um, 
I want to know about the evolution of uh, of in what you call learning capabilities, because uh, how do they co-evolve with 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 what actually happens in in uh, technological upgrading and so forth? What learning mechanisms are 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 involved? What actors are involved in this interactive learning process? If we could understand the learning process as well as the technological uh, upgrading that's going along the lines of catching up and advances in the line of catching up and then flattens out because there doesn't seem to be a sense of need to keep on catching up. They have a sense that they're, they're okay. So I just wanted to know about the learning capabilities if you could explain a little more. And also for Rodrigo, a little more on how you deal with all the the complexity. <clears throat> I mean, it seems like there's complexity in uh, the emergence process of these science parks, and then the co-evolution of the science parks with with sectoral dynamics if they're specialized in something, um, with territorial dynamics at different scales. You've got state governments and you've got local governments, um, uh, and you've got that complexity in the in the actor that you expect to impact also a complex system, um, which is a local innovation system or a, a, as, um, so how do you, what are the limitations in relation to dealing with all this complexity? Um, what do you see as your advances and what would you see as your next steps as a methodological way of understanding more the complexity of impact of, of this kind of, uh, organization. Caleb has a question on government policy or incentive. One more question. Caleb, can you, yeah. You are mute, Caleb. Please unmute, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. The question goes to the first presenter. I enjoy your presentation, it was very nice. I just want to know if there are any policies that support or supported the catch-up between 2005 and 2010. And if there are, how do those policy really influence the process of catch-up during those period? Thank you. So I think you can respond now and then move on to, to the other questions. Both of you, please. Okay. Can I respond now? Sure, sure. Okay, okay. I try to uh, respond to all uh, the questions in, uh, uh, with uh, some comments. Uh, first, uh, it's about uh, catching up criteria. Uh, I use the industrialization of the sector uh, bringing new technologies for the production of fine wines. About the sample, uh, were nine wineries from registered in the association responsible for the sector and that have made important modifications in terms of technology. Uh, the object, uh, object, uh, objective of the study uh, catching up in the sector was the step changes uh, that the sector made to be competitive uh, with international wines after uh, the opening of the market. Uh, the overall uh, about the, the technical efficient of the wine industry is uh, the final consumer market of the product is the product qualification. Uh, about the government policies occur uh, through institutions that are always working together with the wineries uh, to keep up the technology pairing. Uh, about the occurrence of catching up in 2005 was due to opening of the market to international wines where local industries need to, to reinvent, uh, reinvent it, uh, themselves by moving from family farming to industry to have quality uh, wines compared to international uh, ones. About the learning mechanisms, uh, the local industry together uh, with the help uh, of the institutions brought technologies in terms of grape types 
in production of fine wines uh, that use it to make common wines and adapt them uh, to the type of local uh, cultivation and Brazilian consumption. About the bench, uh, benchmarking, I used to um, international markets uh, like uh, France and, and Italy. Uh, these are the, the benchmarking uh, the sector use uh, here in Brazil. I expect uh, the response to all the questions. Thank you uh, very much again. Okay, I will jump to, to answer. Uh, about the, the question uh, made by she, uh, sorry if I mispronunciate your name. Uh, about the key stakeholders, uh, some institutions have some, uh, in fact, this, uh, and how Andrew mentioned, has a complex process in this uh, explanation because we have these different eras of emerging size parks. The first, the first science park was a project of of military government, the dictatorship we had here in Brazil. So the K, the K, um, K fields, the, the strategic fields, they they determine, they implement a science parks, they they uh, put together with some government firms. Uh, then after this, we have different uh, strategies. In the 90s, what emerged more were uh, private initiatives in the south. Uh, I believe Unicinos, they have uh, one science park that uh, the key uh, the stakeholder is the, the, the university. And uh, after the 2000s, we have this government, federal government push. So the federal government design uh, fundings for initiatives and call for project. So each um, location design your project and send for required uh, funding. In this process, we have multiple designs and uh, clearly, clearly in this time we have a, a, a objective in this policy that is spread uh, the, the locations that they are where to concentrate in the, in the south and southeast regions. So, uh, so I go to the question of Andrew, where how to how we deal with this complexity. In fact, this is part of the our discussion that we we don't have the tools to deal with this complexity very defined. So we made one approach with this factor analysis to promote an empirical test that more uh, more uh, well received in the economics uh, field. But our major goal was to talk about complexity. So this we, we insist in this idea of agent based model because uh, we have to, to try some, some alternatives in this, in this uh, path. But uh, we, we somehow we jump the complexity we make uh, some assumptions and uh, even with these, with these limitations we have in, the, in, our, in our work, we find a result. So we are talking of, to look at this. We, we made this without considering all the complexity inside this object, but we still have the, the impact. So what we, what we will get if we search with what we will have a better tools to deal with all this complex to understand better this phenomena. So our biggest result is more in this way, uh, I believe. Now, uh, Professor Bajon uh, Sheen uh, has a very interesting remark on, uh, remark to Patricia. Professor Sheen, can you please? Yeah, my, my little point of, of add, adding this context to flavor was, was to say that I don't think the export rate is a, is a useful indicator for catching up because Brazilian wine industry is a niche producer and, and, and uh, you can't compare them, compare it to Brazilian, uh, Chile and Argentina. So as a niche producer, the international market will always be very limited. Even if I think that the price ratio uh, 
poor price ratio is very competitive. So there I disagree with Patricia. I, I found it very, very competitive, really. But, uh, and some of the firms, one firms I wish to do have, ex, do have some export to the US, UK, and Germany uh, uh, among countries. But, but so that was my point. It, it, it is an niche producer, which is underlined by, by the small uh, domestic, uh, domestic consumption also. That is a beautiful, yes. beautiful area, and, and it's called Piedmont, it's Piedmont of Brazil. Eh? It's as beautiful as Piedmont is wine, wine is very important. Let me see, you have a comment. Let me see, are you here? Let me see, it's not present. Uh, is, uh, is Carlo back? Uh, Emmanuel A. Jim. Has a, has a couple of questions to Carlo. Carlo is away. So if anybody else uh, want to come forward and ask for comment, can, please. We have time, yeah, until Carlo comes back. Please, anybody? I don't think Carlo is coming back. He announced he's leaving. He said he'll, he'll take 10 minutes, but we may not have 10 minutes. <laughs> then uh, can we wind up then? Is it okay? Before before winding up, uh, I wish to ask Bentoke if you want to say something. Do you want me to say something? No. Please, yeah, yeah. If you want to say something, please. No, I, I just uh, think we had a, a great discussion. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, this activity is just one year old. Uh, very young indeed. Huh? Uh, they can't even speak one year old and they cannot really walk very well. Uh, so it's a learning experience. And um, I think we should, uh, when you do uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, 3.0 version, uh, we should see how we could uh, uh, how we could give the presenters a better chance uh, to uh, introduce a more limited material, uh, which we have full access to because uh, uh, it's not really uh, just to uh, people like Rodrigo and Patricia who have written big, uh, big volumes and, and only getting across a few pages and slides. So perhaps we should focus on one chapter in such cases or in, in one specific dimension of the work rather than trying to cover it all. I realized that it gives a chance for Rodrigo and Patricio to give a kind of general impression of all the work they have done, but, but uh, it, it's, it's not really fair because uh, we cannot give uh, uh, totally qualified comments on this uh, basis. But anyhow, given the circumstances, I think we had an excellent discussion and uh, the two presenters made a great job. So I would like to end by that. Thank you. Vero and, uh, Veronica and Swati, your final comments. I just want to thank for the, present for the presenters uh, that bring their work here. I think uh, it's very interesting to, to read uh, their shops. And also I, I, I would like to say that the work of Patricia is, was, is very impressive because it's a master thesis uh, and uh, she, she, she has made a very nice shop with a qualitative research, interviews, analysis, um, I'm agree with uh, Ben Dog that uh, we should be able to read more 
of their work to 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 make proper comments. Uh, I hope they they found what we say useful for their research. Swati. Uh, yeah. And uh, again, I just want to thank both the presenters for uh, actually talking about very different dimensions. It was really very interesting to uh, have, have your presentations today. And equally, uh, I was uh, very much amazed by the comments by Ben Tuke and Carlos. It actually enriched all of us enormously. Uh, we all uh, learned a lot uh, you know about the different dimensions of the things and uh, <clears throat> with this I just uh, thank you all uh, uh, and uh, I, I just uh, I, I just thanks once again and uh, wish you all good luck and uh, thank you Carlo do you have a final comment very, very, very quickly. Uh, uh, my words of thank for, for the, to the organizers and to the presenters. Uh, I very much agree with Ben Toke that it's very hard to do justice of, uh, you know, maybe three years of or four years of PhD and a, and a big book in, in 10 minutes. But uh, I hope that nevertheless, you know, this, this, this global discussion and different perspectives that we bring together in these occasions can help uh, uh, young scholars uh, all the time. Thank you very much and, and I hope to see you soon and hopefully in presence. So can we wind up? Uh, let's thank and congratulate the, uh, the two presenters, Patricia and Rodrigo, beautiful presentations. Uh, and I hope you have uh, uh, benefited by the comments definitely we even we are all benefited by the, the comments uh, uh, we have received uh, thanks Swati, Veronica, Carlo and Bentoke uh, for a careful review and comments on the purpose I okay agree with bye Bento. bye everybody have a bye. Nice bye bye <laughs> Bye bye take care bye 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 our year. next seminar is on 21st January. Again, two papers, 21st. one by uh, 21st January, two papers are there, Justina uh, Panuma and the other one by Daniel Nigasi, uh, Lillian Lihasi will chair, Andy Hall, Judith Francis, MEC Abhisuga and Rajesh will discuss these papers. So until then, goodbye. Uh, take care. Take Thank care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank Goodbye. you for the opportunity. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye to all. You know.